Ethereum. Are you watching this evolution? In this video, we're going to be talking about the Ethereum London hard fork. We're going to be talking about EIP-1559, what has recently happened with Ethereum, and why I am so bullish on Ethereum. We're going to be talking and I'm going to be sharing my thoughts with you why you need to be paying attention to the evolution that is currently happening with the current financial system, particularly Ethereum. Good morning, everybody. Now, before we get into that, let's just have a quick look at a video that I made on the 7th of January, 2021. Yes, about eight months ago, or seven months ago, I made a video saying Ethereum was ready to explode and 50,000 Rand was a possibility by the end of the year. I've had to readjust my price target because while I was predicting 50,000 in January, it seems that I have undershot the mark. So let me just explain that in a bit more detail. At the time of this video, which was on the 7th of January, Ethereum was currently trading at about 19,000 Rand per coin. And by predicting or saying that we could expect Ethereum at 50,000 by the end of the year, that was more than double the current price. In addition to that, on the 1st of January this year, Ethereum was trading at around about 11,000 Rand. So as you can see, Ethereum certainly moving in the right direction. But that's not all. We've seen that and I've made videos about this before, where Ethereum year on year is just having exponential growth, 300 odd percent growth, 400 percent growth for Ethereum. So now there's been a couple of changes to the tokenomics, a couple of things that have happened that have made me sit back and go, I think Ethereum by the end of the year is going to be considerably higher. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you my prediction. And I think it is a realistic prediction. While it might be a little bit lofty, I think we are going to see it come to pass. So what I'm really doing is I'm saying that 50,000 Rand prediction is no longer valid. We have to set our sights higher. We have to look at a better price. But let's look at why this could happen. You know, it's easy. Anyone can give a prediction with no consequences. If a coin doesn't reach that price, so what? But if we start looking at the tokenomics and explaining why and how we get to these figures, it starts to make a lot more sense and gives people confidence to understand what is happening with the tokenomics of a specific coin. Let's have a quick look at Altcoin Trader. We can see that we've got Ethereum currently trading at 48,000 Rand per coin. Now, we know that Ethereum, um, this is not the all time high that we've seen. Earlier this year, we saw Ethereum on Altcoin Trader going up as high as 64,000 Rand per coin. On Coin Market Cap, we have got Ethereum at 3,214 US dollars per coin. And at the moment it is climbing and that is possibly because of what we are seeing in the cryptocurrency with the total economics of Ethereum. But there's a lot of factors that actually play into this. We are experiencing a bit of a bull run. Now let's talk about ERP-1559 and what it essentially did for Ethereum that has made a lot of people bullish. First of all, a lot of people have said that Ethereum is going to become deflationary because of this new improvement protocol. EIP simply stands for Ethereum Improvement Protocol and 1559 is the number that was suggested. So in other words, they follow sequentially. So that's how Ethereum gets to these crazy names. So what is happening is before Ethereum worked with a fee basis that was a bit like an auction. In fact, it was an auction. So you would bid on a price to get your transaction pushed through and your wallet would give you some type of guidance. So if you were using MetaMask, you could see a fee that would be slow, medium and fast and you could choose one. But what often happened is that people didn't really or the MetaMasks and the wallets weren't able to give very accurate predictions. So a lot of people, when they wanted a transaction through, they would just put the fee higher and push it through, making Ethereum a place for only the rich to play. So in other words, you had a, a transaction that you wanted to go through, you had the money, you just pushed it through. Now, with Ethereum EIP-1559, there is a base fee. This base fee gets burnt. 
Okay, and that is critical. We're going to come back to that in a second. There's also a tip that you can give the miner, and that is a way that you can incentivize your transaction for, for going through quicker. But this burning of the base fee means that there are less Ethereum. So the miners are no longer getting all the money from the transactions. They are being burnt. They are being sent to addresses that no one has the private keys to, and thereby causing less Ethereum to be in the ecosystem. And with scarcity comes um, price increase and the asset becomes more sought after. So how much has been burnt with ERP-1559 and has Ethereum actually gone deflationary? Well, the short answer is no, not at this stage. Before we can start to make sense of how much is burnt and how that is relevant, we need to understand a little bit more about the Ethereum ecosystem and what's actually happening. So I'm just going to click here and we're going to first of all find out how many Ethereum are currently in circulation. Now looking down here, if we scroll down further, we can see that there is currently a circulating supply of 117 million Ethereum. Okay, so that's how many coins are out there. That's how many coins people have. Let's have a look at what is being produced every day. Okay. Ethereum supply growth chart. Now, if we have a look at it here, we can see that every day we're getting sort of 13,500 Ethereum produced. And that comes from block rewards, comes from, um, you know, what we call uncle transactions. But every, you see, uncle rewards, if you guys are asking what the uncle rewards are, you know, when you pay La Bola, the uncles decide on how much it, is going to charge and they know no sorry man it's nothing like that it's not it's not that at all what happens with uncle rewards is that when there are two blocks that miners mine at the same time right and those blocks only one can go through but the the miner that mined the other one at the same time is also given a reward that's just a sort of a overall glossary of that um you can actually go and research that in more detail but what that is is two blocks that are mined at the same time um rewards are given obviously the uncle block is given a lot less rewards and that's why we get this but the thing to focus on here is that we can see that um 13,500 13, that's the amount of ethereum that are being pumped into the system every day okay so let's have a look at what has been burnt every day now guys here, this is a website, and I'm going to leave descriptions to all of these graphs and websites that I've looked at in the description below so that you can go and do your own research. But currently, we're looking at a burn rate of 2.5 Ethereum every single minute. Now, that is very impressive because we know the price of Ethereum. So if we look at the price of Ethereum per day, and let me just pop up a calculator here. So we can see for the last 24 hours, we've had 3.73 Ethereum burnt, and this has been burnt every minute. So we would have to say there's 24 hours in a day. Let's times that by 60 minutes in every uh, hour. That gives us 1,440 minutes per day. Now we need to times that by 3. Um, 73 Ethereum that gives us 5,371 Ethereum that were burnt in the last 24 hours. Let's put a value to that in rands. We know Ethereum is roughly 48,000 rand on altcoin trader. Wait for this 257 million rands worth of Ethereum has been burnt in the last 24 hours. Okay, so in dollars, if you do the same calculation, it turns out to about 17 million US dollars of Ethereum burnt in the last 24 hours. But this still means that Ethereum is not deflationary because on the one hand, we've got 13,000 Ethereum being created every 24 hours. And with the burning, the new EIP 1559, we've got around about 5,000 that were burnt. So we are still having more Ethereum pumped into the economy every single day which is not a bad thing. It incentivizes miners and it keeps the system going. But what can happen is as the transaction fee goes up, as the base fee increases, we could get a day or two, and we've already had a day or two, where more Ethereum is burned than Ethereum is mined. And at that point, we are seeing the Ethereum ecosystem in a deflationary state. In other words, Ethereum is becoming more scarce. There are less Ethereum that day than there were the previous day. And that 
I don't need to tell you, means that Ethereum is becoming scarce and that scarcity is going to bolster the price. But guys, this is not about price. This is not only about tokenomics. This is about the usefulness of Ethereum. The fees are going through the roof and a lot of people are throwing their hands up and going, we can't even trade on Uniswap. We can't take part in DeFi because the fees are astronomical and that they are. Sometimes we're looking at 70, 80 US dollars for a transaction, which would translate to over a thousand rand for a transaction. Now guys, by anyone's standards, those are excessive fees. So, is that a bad thing? No, that is indicative of the fact that people are eager to use this alternative financial system. It just shows the value of the chain. So don't be demoralized. Don't be upset by these high fees. Understand that it is the growth. It is the birth of the new alternative financial system. And if you are wanting to make the smaller trades, go to side chains, layer twos, uh, Polygon is something that I highly recommend. Now, let's just talk a bit more about the Ethereum. What I want to look here, look at here is the unique addresses that are being created every single day. As you can see from this chart, it is just going up. So in other words, Ethereum is being adopted by more and more people. This doesn't mean people because we know one person can have multiple addresses, but the facts and the figures speak for themselves. We can see that every single day, more and more Ethereum addresses are being created. More people are flooding into the Ethereum ecosystem. More demand, higher fees, higher prices. Um, it's a positive feedback loop that makes Ethereum, in my opinion, a very sound investment. In fact, one of the top investments that we can see. So we have Ethereum being burned. We have um, Ethereum being produced, we have more users every day. And the final metric that I want to show in this video is the staked Ethereum. We currently have about six million, six and a half million Ethereum staked in Ethereum 2.0. Why is that important? Because first of all, people that stake the Ethereum to, uh, for the Ethereum 2.0 are not able to get the Ethereum back until Ethereum 2.0 launches okay so we have 6.5 million ethereum locked away that are out of supply in addition to that those ethereum at 6.5 million ethereum which equates to about five and a half percent of the total supply of ethereum which in my opinion is extremely impressive these are people that don't want to sell they have no option they cannot sell they are so steadfast in their beliefs that ethereum is going to be a investment for the future that they've locked up the Ethereum for an uh, undefined period of time. It could happen in 2021. It could happen in 2022. They are not able to unlock their assets. That's how secure they are about this technology. And I think that speaks volumes. So guys, Ethereum, in my opinion, has not stopped. It is really just started. When you hear people saying, no, the Ethereum is too expensive. People aren't going to use it. They're going to move to other chains. Just remember, the reason that it is expensive is because it is so good. It is like prime real estate, a place where the wealthy want to go and do their transactions. And Ethereum will scale. It's only a matter of time. There are too many people, too many smart people behind this Ethereum ecosystem to let this project slip. Once it scales, Ethereum will continue to be the de facto um, DeFi choice. In other words, if you want to do DeFi, Ethereum is going to, for the foreseeable future, remain the coin of choice. Now, guys, I promised that I would give a prediction of Ethereum um, by the end of the year. And I know that this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but I believe that we can expect to see Ethereum somewhere between 80 and 120,000 by the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022. And I know that from the 48,000 where it is now to say that it's going to possibly double again seems ridiculous. But what I've just shown you, the tokenomics that we can um, see, the evolution that we are seeing roll out in front of our very eyes 
is something to take note of. This alternative financial system has taken root. We know there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of regulation. Um, in the US, the Senate is, is passing regulation or not passing regulation. But cryptocurrency is bigger than regulation. Cryptocurrency is bigger than the American Senate. This alternative, uh, alternative financial system is not going to be going anywhere in the near future. Guys, if you like this content, I'll ask you to smash the like button so that I know that I'm doing something right and I continue to produce videos like that. That's it from me. I'm out.